Hello. Yes, you are first, Jared. Are we live on here? Everything looks all right. We're going to put these away for a minute because uh, that's coming up later. I was taking my little thumbnail thing we got to take. So uh, there we go. We got some people popping on. Let me hit a uh, refresh here. Make sure I can get my uh, my chats up. I mute my pooter. All right. I'm not, I can't see my own video yet. Story of my life. Well, I'm just going to keep staring at this chat for a minute while we uh, get going here. I will get started momentarily as soon as I can see my own video so that I can look at your uh, your chat stuff more efficiently because otherwise it becomes a bit of a pain in the arse. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming out. This is Brews and Blades. Uh, we're going to do something a little different tonight. Um, I couldn't really decide what to do for tonight's show. I admit I've been extremely busy the last week and a half or so. So uh, we're going to do a video that I was going to do later this week, but we're going to do it live. I'm going to do my EDC update for this month live. So uh, let's see how that goes. Well, I know I'm live. I can see it on here. There we go. Cool beans. All right, now I can see what you guys are saying. So uh, <laughs> hey there, Hollywood. Yeah, I had a... I uh, So what happened to me um, this week, let me clean my camera lens off I can see it's a little smudgy so um I went to a trade show for my uh quote-unquote day job which is reviewing bicycles which isn't really much of a day job but uh that's my day job and um then I came back and uh I got cast in a movie so I got kind of busy there was a movie shooting here in uh Rochester and somebody got hurt so I wound up having to fill in so that was been an interesting couple of days because mostly because uh I can't act. So that was kind of interesting to be acting in a movie and being third lead in a movie and I can't act. But I I think I did okay. I don't know. We'll see when it comes out. It's either going to be a cult classic or the worst movie ever made. I'm not really sure about that. So uh, we'll we'll find out together when it comes out. I'm not allowed to say what the movie is yet, but um it's not a big deal. It's a little indie flick. It's not like a not like anything. Yeah, I think I'm going to be the the best actor on a terrible movie. I think that might be what happens. No, it, it actually there were some really funny moments. It was pretty good. So uh, I can't I can't say what it's uh what it's called yet. But um I will definitely let you guys know whenever it comes out. It's supposed to come out in like February. So uh, we will see. But thank you guys so much for coming out. We have a lot of people on now. So let's get going with a proper show here. We have uh, I want to thank our sponsors first of all. Weha. As always, do a little trivia question here in a moment. You can win one of these little three sets. Uh, these are awesome. I'm running low on these, and uh, Weha said they're going to send me something different. So I have this one. I think I have one for the next live show, and then uh, I'm going to have something different. We're going to be changing. some going to be Weha tools, but I don't know what it's going to be. So we'll find out. They seem very happy about it. So uh, maybe we'll get a little upgrade in a couple weeks. I don't really know. Um, also, uh, White Mountain Knives, of course. Please use my code S M W or S. Yep, S D W M K, and then you can um, uh, get ten percent off on anything on the store. And you guys have been using it, and I love it. it. It helps me out a lot when you guys use it. I don't get a monetary kickback, but the more that you guys use that, the more that uh, White Mountain Knives is um, is. Uh, willing to send me stuff at wholesale and loan me stuff and stuff so it really it really 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 does help out the channel when you guys use it a lot so far they love me so thank you guys so much for using it as much as you can um and uh um no no one handed me the package i just have really long arms <laughs> but uh, yeah white mountain knives is great um uh i'm waiting on them to get the zto 470 in we'll talk about that in a minute uh when, when i talk about stuff we have upcoming but um great site i love them and i live in new york they're in new hampshire so it's basically like two day shipping whenever i uh get anything from them so um i do have the knife pivot lube and the artisan cutlery stickers up before you ask they're from the giveaway uh, they're not regular sponsors but they gave us a lot of stuff for the giveaway so for my uh 3, giveaway so i don't mind them still being up there but uh Thank you guys again so much for coming out. Let's uh, let's do the trivia question. I'm going to give it out first of all here, and then we will uh, move on. So the trivia question, how you have to enter, I'm going to ask you a question. Wait till the video is over, and then reply in the comments down below. I can't do
do a random pick from your uh, your live comments. So please wait till the video's over, then comment down below. And if you comment in the pics, everybody knows. So uh, it, it's kind of pointless. Uh, my question is going to be, you'll see this knife again later. What year was the Benchmade 940 introduced? What year was the Benchmade 940 introduced? That is the trivia question. Again, do not answer in the live comments. Wait until the video is over. Post in the comments down below. Out of all the right answers, I'm going to pick one random person, and you're going to win one of these little little Weeha toolkits. So, all right. Um, yeah, time for Google. Uh, no, just the original one. When was the 940 first come out? Not this, not this exclusive one. The original 940. When did the first nine, Benchmade 940 come out? All right, that is a trivia question. Uh, let's open a beer. This is Brews and Blades, right? So uh, I'm, I'm just going cheap tonight. I'm just going Stella Artois. I was in the mood for it. I was off at a trade show, and other people were paying for booze. I drink a lot of really heavy beers. I'm just liking having something a little lighter now. I did upgrade the official bottle opener of Brews and Blades, though. This is a uh, Kershaw Pub in the carbon fiber. I used to use the uh, Kershaw Shuffle, which, as I always said, is a great bottle opener, terrible knife. Uh, this is a decent knife and a decent bottle opener, so I'm actually going to do a review on this this week. That's actually coming up, too. Um, yep, as a matter of fact, now I'm having a hard time opening the bottle because I can't find a... There we go. Couldn't find some purchase there. There we are. So, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you guys are talking about something else. You guys have already go branched off into conversations that are off topic, and I don't know. So, uh, what's coming up this week? Um, probably, uh, on the morrow, I'm going, as they say in the old timeies, I'm going to do the, uh, finally do a full review of the CRKT, CRKT Caligo. Really like this knife. Um, uh, it, I think it lost a battle to the death, but then it it it, it stayed around, so uh, I'm still kind of liking it. Um, you guys asked for, and I'm going to do... I was not going to do a review on this because I didn't see the point in it, but you guys really seem to want to see a full review of this particular 940, the 1501. This is the 20 CV exclusive one from, uh, wow, Knifeworks, I do believe. I'm hoping I'm remembering that right, but uh, I am really loving this. As you'll find out more lady, more lady, more in a moment. So uh, I'm really liking that. So I am probably gonna do a full review on that. Um, what else do we have? Uh, pocket pens. I love pocket pens. I told you guys I'm gonna do some more EDC stuff. They just came out with these uh, right in the rain uh, collaboration ones. So they have a pressurized uh, thing, and I can attest they work because this went through the wash. And it's fine. It still works. So uh, it does work the full, almost like a you know space pen thing. It's a space pen, Jerry. So uh, that works great. And they have these new pocket clips, which are really cool. They're $4, which is uh, more than an individual pocket pen is, but uh, you can reuse them. They just slide on and off. They're pretty awesome. So I'm going to do a pocket pen review this week. And what else did I have? Um, oh, I've got a Manly Wasp showing up. Uh, any moment now, and I'm very excited about getting that. So uh, I've bonded up one one of the manly knives in a long for a long time, and I've got one coming. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, now, let's let's talk more about what we're the meat of this show is going to be. I usually do these uh, in separate videos, but I thought tonight I'm going to do one live. Why not? Um, it's it's been a month since I did one of my EDC updates, or it's gonna be in a couple of days. I think I did one like the twenty fourth. It's the twenty first. Close enough, right? Um, we're gonna do my EDC update. The knives I've carried the most for the last month after I drink some beer. So as usual, I'm gonna do my top five, but I'm also gonna do a couple of secondaries uh, alongside of it. So um, if we just just to a lot of you guys care more about the big stuff than. Uh, so someone says, can I see your atlas? Well-timed, Stephen F. Selden. Yeah, because I'm going to talk about my most carried secondary knives. And, yeah, that's probably the one I've carried the most. Is my Three Rivers Manufacturing Atlas. I've been carrying this a whole lot as a secondary, sometimes as a primary. As I said uh, earlier, I got roped into doing a movie. And I was on a movie set for two and a half days. And I uh, didn't want to flip anybody out so i just carried this and it got used a lot 
there was a whole lot of times. It's a low budget movie. There's not a whole lot of crew. And they were like, oh, we got to cut something. We got to open something. And I had this and it didn't freak anybody out. I love this Atlas. It's a great knife. It's just, it slices so well for its size. Great steel. I like the carbon fiber. I have the matte carbon fiber. It also came with a white um, G10. But man, just what a great knife. S35VN, great steel. Nice deep carry clip. This has just been... This is a this is a never sell knife. This is a keep forever. Absolutely. Already has made that. And I've had it for what, a month and a half. It's it's a great freaking knife. I'm a Three Rivers fan anyway, so um highly recommend you get one of these. Um they sold a, they sold out so quickly. I know they've said that this is gonna be higher up in their priority list for future production runs. You know how TRM is, you kinda have to get them while they're available and, and they don't always necessarily last long, but There'll be a lot more Atlases coming out. Other secondaries have been carrying the Best Tech Engine. I really like this, and it is not Brian Spec at all. This is not the one I reviewed. I went out and bought one myself with my own monies, and I chose this, uh, the, what do they call it now? Spectrum tie finish. Just so cool. I really do like it. And, man, it's good. Yeah, New York don't like big knives, but that's not really that big a deal. I, if I'm downtown, I can only carry three inches, but any place in the suburbs and stuff, which is where I spend most of my time, it's it's completely fine to carry three and a half or four. So, uh, but man, I do really like this engine. I like the big, I like this uh, that wraparound back spacer. There's just so many things. You guys can go back and watch the review. I just really, really love it. I really do. Uh, you guys are reading my mind some of the stuff you're asking if I've been carrying. When I get some of the main knives, we'll get we'll get to some that you've already mentioned. But the action on this one is actually a lot better than the one that I reviewed. I had the uh, the clip point one and the action was a bit I don't know, just different. But this one is uh this one is much better. Really loving the engine. I just love that look. I just love that that spectrum tie. It's it's really cool. Uh, next up, uh, another one I've been carrying a whole lot is the uh, CRKT Pilar, which is was in my last month's video too, but this is the new one. This is the S35VN one. Um, it's just representative of the breed. I've got this and I have the, um, what was the, the 12C27 version. Um, I'm going to sell the 12C27 one. That'll be in the next knife sale. I like this. Unless you guys want it, let me know. And I'll, uh, if somebody hits me up, my email is down there below somewhere. Uh, I'm probably going to sell the 12C27 because it's exactly the same other than the steel. This is just S35 instead of 12C27. So um, great. I just love the ergonomics of it. So comfortable. It's just so good. It's so good. Really, really like it. Um, somebody's asking, can I compare the Delica to the PM3? Uh, nope, because I don't have either of them right now. I sold them both. Uh, I'm going to get another Delica. I'll probably get a pair of three again at some point, but not my thing. All right, let's go up to the... Uh, these are the main knives I've been carrying the last month. And I do keep track of these because I'm an obsessive person. So for once, I'm going to do these in order of how many days I carried them. Uh, first of all, in in the fifth place, uh, it would be the Spyderco Sage 5. I've really fallen in love with this knife. It's not new. It's not flashy. I have no reason to carry it. Um, as far as, you know, doing a review or anything, but it's under three inches and I carry it a lot when I have to go downtown and I know that I'm trying to comply with laws. Sometimes I ignore those laws, but when I want to comply with the laws, I carry this and it, it's, I love the Sage 5. It's timeless. There's not much else I can say about that. So, um, yeah. Um, next up. Uh, Nick Shabazz shivered when you just said you sold your Delica. I'm going to get another one. I'm just, I'm, I'm shopping around for a Sprint. If I'm going to have one, I'm going to have a Sprint. I'm not going to have just the, I had the bone stock one in purple and it sold quick. So, uh, next up, you guys asked, this is a knife I've been carrying a whole lot too. The Perpetua, this is the mass drop, um, you know, millet knives made, TJ Schwartz designed. Awesome knife. Such a good worker, Nitro V Steel, um, a lot of ways better bench made than a bench made. They did such a good job with this access lock. I don't know what they call it. Uh, I know they don't call it access lock, but oh, the, the action on this thing is just so good. And it's just, 
man, there's nothing I hate about this knife. There really isn't. The pocket clip isn't great. I have heard that there's going to be a better one coming. Uh, but other than that, man, this is just such a great worker. Yeah, any issues with corrosion or staining? I know one person, another YouTuber mentioned something about corrosion. No, I've had no issues, and I do not take care of this knife at all. And uh, it's been completely fine. So I don't know what that is, because Nitro V should not do that. But uh, I can't remember who it was. Some other YouTuber said they got some spots on it. But um, nope, nothing at all. And as you can see, I don't take care of it. It's freaking filthy right now. So um, yeah. It said boo serrations. I don't have any serrations. I don't think I have any serrated knives at all. Oh, you had some spots too? Yeah, I never see. Yeah, QC was not awesome out, out, the, out the gate. I will, say, I will admit that. Mine has been perfect. I have nothing wrong with mine at all. But I, I will say from uh, empirical evidence, it would indicate that uh, the QC on these initially was not great. I didn't think they were ever going to make them again. And now it, it kind of sounds like they probably are. So that's that's great for people to get them. Uh, next up that I carried the most was, you've already seen it, this 940-1501. I love the Benchmade 940. You guys know I love me a Benchmade 940. And this one is uh, this one's a good one. Everybody told me to get the KnifeWorks 20CV G10 one. It's the best 940 there is. And, uh, yep, they were right. It, it, it really is. For the price, especially, I think these are like $199. Um, as compared to my 940-1, which I previously considered to be the best 940, is like $2, $275, something like that. This is cheaper. Great steel. Easier to work. 20CV is not a complete nightmare to sharpen like S90V is. Um, I'm not still in love with the blue bits, but, uh, I do carry this more than my 940-1. I absolutely do. Uh, when I just reach for one, this is great. It's everything I love about a 940 and great steel, and I, I do really like it. Everyone who told me I should get one was right. It does have a Benchmade deep carry clip on it. I had one laying around, but it's Benchmade. All you gotta do is ask nice, and they give you one. So that's cool. Second place has been... I'm really surprised because on paper, I was not expecting to like this particular model as much. But you guys know, we've been pretty Civivi heavy here right now because Civivi's like, they're so hot right now. I, there's so many Civivis coming out, and they're all pretty damn good. Um, I was not expecting to like the $68 ones that much. And I was kind of right about the the Courser I didn't, I didn't care for much at all. I just don't see the point in it. Thin blade, thick handle, I just didn't get it. But... The Aquila is the one I keep coming back to. I really like this. Nice hollow grind blade, thin stock. I mean, it's thin behind the edge. It's awesome. You will see, you will notice, keen-eyed viewers will see, this is not the pocket clip it came with. Um, it came with the titanium pocket clip, which made it stick out quite a bit. Didn't really care for it. So I have a Civivi Praxis that I use a lot, but don't carry a lot. It sits around in my office and stuff, and I use it a lot for cutting up boxes and stuff. But it's rarely in my pocket. So um, I switched. Uh, this is the titanium clip that came on this. is now on the Praxis. And the cheaper loop-over clip is now on the Aquila. And, oh, it's good. I really like it. Yeah, it does look the most Wii-ish. You're right, I guess. It's kind of, as I said in the review, it's like they took the Ignition, the Wii 715 Ignition, which, which is a great knife, too, and they kind of put it in a copier at 110% and then made it a liner lock instead of a frame lock. And in a lot of ways, especially when you have multiple deployment methods, I'd kind of prefer a liner lock because it's you don't have to worry about pushing on the, the lock bar when you're opening it. And I think that's why I like this better than the other Civivis is multiple multiple opening methods. You know, I can spidey flick it, I can thumb flick it, I can use the flipper tab, all those cool things. And I know some people really, really, really hate the gold liners, but with the black uh, G10, I think they look kind of cool. It's a little smoky in the bandit. I like it. Yeah, the, Civi the uh, Praxis is a really good um, food prep knife. I've actually used it for that, so it, it is pretty good for that. Ex and also also excellent cardboard box cutter upper. But this is kind of a, a surprise to me. Maybe it's not to you guys, but my most carried knife of this month by far and of the month before, I just can't keep it out of my pocket. I just I just can't keep it out of my pocket. I don't I don't know why. Every time I just go to reach for a knife in the morning, 
I often just reach for this, and I when I bought it, I kind of thought it was going to be a catch and release. I didn't think I'd keep it, but it's the ZT0393 Stonewash. I I freaking love this thing. I don't. I didn't think I'd like hinderers. Um, I just can't. I can't keep it out of my pocket. It does have the deep carry clip from uh, MXG gear on it, which looks outstanding, and. Um, yeah, I'm still annoyed that it's S35VN instead of 20CV, but this thing is constantly in my pocket, and it's it's too big for me, it's too heavy for me, It's but I I like it, I, I really love it, and it's got me craving an XM18 Hinderer. It really, really, really does. It's gotten in my head now where I have to have one of the new Triway Pivot XM18s. It's really bothering me. Um... To the point I've thought about selling some stuff I never thought I'd sell to get one because an XM18 is not cheap. This, is, this isn't this is bad. This is like 220 It's a very reasonable price for what it is. Um, awesome ZT action, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, exactly. Like you said, Bobby, it is not a Brian knife at all. But man, I just const I'm constantly carrying it. It's just, it's just fun. And you know, a lot of my friends now, it's gotten around. They all know that I'm a knife reviewer guy and you pull this out and they're they're not as intimidated by it as I would think, but I think this is the, the expectation of what they think is going to be in my pocket. <laughs> Sometimes they're disappointed because it's a tiny little thing. But uh, I I love it. But I, I've been thinking about selling off some stuff to get an XM18 now just because I love this so much. That, and I'm like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a hinderer guy? Maybe I'm a hinderer guy. I never thought that would happen. I think I, think I might be a hinderer guy. Uh, you said a three inch slicer is nice, and you're talking about the XM18. I, you know, I I think I want the three and a half, which is even crazier. I think I want the bigger one. I I would think I'd want the three because I can carry it more often. But I don't know if I'm gonna get a hinder. I kind of my first hinder I think should be the bigger one. Um, I guess we're we're morphing into answering questions now. Did I happen to see JT's video of the carbon fiber delica? I did. Yeah, that, that was kind of sad. Yeah, I think the three point five skinny slicer is the one I want. So um. And do I carry my wasabi? Yes, I do. Uh, not not a whole lot, but every time I do, I wonder why I don't, um, if that makes any sense. But if, if I get a hinderer, that might be one that goes away. It might be the wasabi and my 940-1 that go away to buy a hinderer, which is a tough, tough, tough decision. I'm not saying I'm going to do it. If anybody wants either of those, make me offers, but they're going to have to be pretty damn solid offers for me to consider selling either of those. But... You know, money ain't, ain't as good as it was, and I've got Christmas coming up, so I, I need to sell some stuff. I'm going to buy some stuff, but I do have some stuff on the way. Um, $5, yeah. I'm not going to say what I want to say, but it rhymes with uh, go duck yourself, uh, BP69. But <laughs> just kidding. Um, as as soon as I get, uh, as soon as White Mountain Knives has it, I'm going to get the 0470. Um I'm also going to probably put in the same order a, they have the Code 4s and S35 from uh, Cold Steel now. I really want one of those. Probably throw in a Bush Ranger light from Cold Steel because i kind of interested in that. I didn't like the regular Bush Ranger that much. It kept biting me. But the light is cheap and I kind of want to try that out. I think you guys would be interested in it. Um, and then Spyderco, I have the Amalgam and the Smock on order. Uh, pre-order so I have to get those I'm kind of committed to those uh, maybe a mantra three but um I'm not really sure about the mantra three uh, a lot of the reviews I've watched from people I really respect aren't weren't glowing so they weren't bad but I'm just like eh, I don't know um, and one I really want now is uh, the new made by Hogue knives, uh, Doug Ritter Mark One G Two, which is basically a better uh, mini or a better full size Griptilian, and I've always wanted a bench made Griptilian, but I didn't like the feel of the materials. Um, and this is it's a bench made Griptilian with really nice G Ten and better in M three ninety, and I'm kind of like ah uh, yeah I really I really want it. So uh, those are the ones I've got coming up. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the, the the Ritter is a maybe, but probably going to get it. So um, have you seen the re the Wii Roxy? Yes, it haunts my dreams. I really want one of those very, very badly. And luckily, 
I know the designer, so hopefully I can <laughs> I can get my hands on one. Although I've asked multiple times, hey dude, can you make sure I get one of those set aside? And he just keeps, and uh, Zal just keeps saying, no, I can't. Fine, whatever. But no, he can't. Uh, we is we is like that. We is um. They don't give preferential treatment to anybody, which is a fair way to run a business. It's like how Apple runs their business. So, how's the Neutron holding up? Great. I actually I use it. I use it a fair amount. Um, I've just been uh, obsessed with new stuff lately, so I haven't been carrying it as much as I did. But I'm really excited about the what is it? The Atom, the bigger one they've got. That one looks really good. So, oh, the Black Star haunts. Oh, the Black Star definitely haunts my dreams too. The Isham Black Star. The front flipper slip joint thing. Oh. Yeah, you have a promissory invoice on a Roxy when it arrives at the distributor. Yeah, so do I. I've got, I do have an in one distributor. I told my distributor, hold on to one of those for me. And he said he would. So uh, as soon as they come in, I'm sure you guys know who my distributor is. It's not really a big secret, but uh, yeah, White Mountain Knives. Whenever they're in there, I'll probably get one. Um, but it's going to come out like, uh, we're getting close to Christmas. It's got to come out before I'm broke. You know, I don't want to do something stupid like spend money on my kids instead or something. So are there pre-orders out for the Atom yet? No, there aren't. Um, they, they haven't done that yet. So the best way to keep track of that stuff is follow them on Instagram. And then it'll come up on their, uh, I can't remember the name of the site they use for their, their monetary things, but it'll come up there. So, uh, and then. You know, check it out there. And usually, they, they think it's like twelve fifty. They charge you. So, um, are you gonna try the the Benchmade aileron? I, I, it's breezy. Yeah, that's it. Um, I, I would like to try the aileron. I don't think it's something I'm gonna shell out the cash for, but um, I kind of have a feeling that if I get my hands on one, it's probably one I would want. But uh, I'm not really sure. I'm a big Benchmade fan, of which there are a few of us left on the the YouTubers. I think. I think it's me and. Birdshot and JT's Knife Life are the only ones that really still love Benchmade, but uh, I do love the company. The Mini Ethereum, yeah, I would like, to, I would kind of like to get a Mini Ethereum, but it's not one that I'm gonna shell out pre-order for. Uh, have you seen the videos from Nero Knife? Oh yeah, we spied and matched a bunch of ZTs and they failed. I know, but it's I, I saw it, but I've never had a problem with any ZTs. It's just uh. Not maybe I'm just not hard enough on my knives, but I don't know. I never had an issue. Uh, I have no idea about the Roxy of which. Um, oh yeah, Pops, please, big Benchmade do too. But uh, as far as the Roxy, I have no idea what styles and finish it's coming in. Bobby's asking that. Um, wish I knew. I did try spine whack my two. My only two ZTs I have are this 0393 and an 0609, and they didn't. They didn't give up. They were fine. Um, I'd do it here on camera, but it would shake everything really hard. But uh, I tried it just to see, and they were totally fine. Um, I think that might have just been an uh, older generation thing or something. I don't know. I'm not going to get involved in that. Um, but yeah, so uh, so how did you guys like? I did the um, I did the review on the uh, Dossoffen Mirror wallet. And it didn't get a whole lot of clicks, but that's fine. I understand there's a whole lot of dust off and mirror ones. But I really want to start doing some more EDC gear reviews to branch out a little bit. I've got enough followers now that I have confidence in the future of this. So, um, like I said, I'm going to do the pocket pens. Not just not just this right in the rain version, but I'm just going to do all of them in one video. Um, I'm going to do one of this, uh, the i1R EOS from Olight the best keychain light that has ever existed in the history of man and if you say i'm wrong uh i'll i'll fight you I, I really love this thing it's so good um i've been using the hell out of this thing and it's just been awesome so uh i'm gonna do a review of that but i don't know we're gonna see review some gear from bastion yeah i've, I've seen some of the bastion stuff that looks all right um hello woodland tactical by the way and also, I want to say hello. I saw Shortcut Reviews is on here. We're good friends. Great channel. Go check him out. Very, very good. good very, very good dude. And uh, we have similar tastes and stuff. Some Hitch and Timber stuff would be nice to see. Ironic that you said that because I just was watching um, Cutlery Lover had a 
video about some hitch and timber stuff and I was like, I need to ask for stuff from them. Um, flashlights and multi-tools all day long. Yeah, the multi-tool stuff, I, I, I need to do that too, so. Um, new tactile turn pencil, I don't know what that is. I, I like pencils too. I, some In some ways I prefer the feel of writing with a pencil that, than I do with a pen, but um, let's drag out some other stuff here. I'm just trying to keep things interesting. I didn't have enough knives out. Or, uh, well, that's what I have laying around. Oh, I was fiddling with this today. I hadn't taken it apart since I got it, so I took it apart. and a little, a little native. I'm going to carry this tomorrow. It's on my list for tomorrow because uh, I have not played with a little native in a while. And uh, I took it out, and it was feeling a bit stiff. It's been lonely and just left in the case, so I took it out and gave it the old knife pivot lube treatment and uh, put it back together, and I'm going to carry it tomorrow because I... I miss this thing. I almost, I know it's sad to say, but as the life of a knife reviewer, I kind of forgot that I had one. But uh, that happens sometimes. Wish more golden eyes, or golden eyes had the wire clip. Yeah, I love the wire clip. I think it's pretty great. I need to do a little native and F. Yeah, I'm really surprised the little native hasn't come out in any sprints. I, I agree with you there 100%, man. Uh, it's. PP69 says that uh, I would love a sprint of this. I'd love this in 20CV or M390 or S110V or whatever. Because I, I really like it. But S, you know, S30V is honestly completely freaking fine. But it would be cool just to have have one in a fancy pants version. I played with a little native. Well, my wife is half Cherokee, so... um, Badow. No, she, she actually is. I, that's a bad joke. I'm going to get in trouble if she sees this video. But... Uh, um. An old Nave and LC200 hasn't come out yet. Your old <laughs> Patty's Pale Peelers, another great channel. Go check him out. Uh, I'm old and stiff and need need oiled if you're offering. Um, no, uh, first of all, I'm very far away, and um, my days of oiling men are long since past. So, uh, yeah. Um, yep, that, that's why you carry two knives. The one I'm testing in my left pocket and the faithful PM2 in the right. What I do is I usually have a backpacker, and now, now in the winter I have a coat so usually I have my knife in my pocket or I have my knife in my coat and I have the knife I'm reviewing in my pocket and then I carry a small little second one so I isn't that going to be fun for there's a lot of knife reviewers on here so I'm, so I'm going to talk to you guys is it when it's, it's going to be really fun that day that we get searched by the cops and we have to explain I'm not a psychopath I review knives that's why I have four of them with me I had to go to this trade show last week, and I realized I had two knives in my pocket and four in my bag. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just like, what What am I thinking? If I get pulled over, this is going to be a thing. Uh, you already had to explain that to a cop? I'd love to hear how that went. You should do a video about that. I like, no, I'm not crazy. But here's my here's my link to my YouTube. Have I seen Brendan Schaub stand up? No, I, I have not. I'm sorry, I do not know who that is. Um, you have the oh my you, yeah you got my my S one ten B pair of two right yeah I I I that was one I sold just because um I just uh I have I can't I don't I don't need two PM twos so that's why um yeah make that in a car rant I'd really like to hear about explaining to the cop why you have four or five knives on you um. Your landlady came and thank God my knives were put away. Yeah, you know what? I, I honestly, I'm pretty surprised. I went to that trade show this week, and a lot of these guys just know me as a bicycle reviewer. And it came up about the about knives and like, doing knife reviews and stuff. And you know what the number one response I had? Somebody pulled a knife out of their pocket and showed it to me. And it was all junk. But still, it was nice that they did. And, you know, nobody was really that. Like, all the guys were, all the dudes anyway, were didn't think it was weird at all. A lot of them asked to borrow a knife from me, and when someone asked to borrow, they say, I gotta cut something open, do you have a knife? I handed them my Giltec Ruck. I think I sold about five of these this weekend, or this past weekend at that trade show, because everybody was like, this is the coolest thing ever, because they're just opening boxes and stuff. As you can see, it got used, because I've not cleaned it off yet, and it's covered in sticky stuff, but uh, it's cool. Um, Thoughts on nothing new from Spyderco in the mid to upper range? I mean, I, I think there's a lot in the mid range. I think that the amalgam, the um, 
the uh, Mantra 3, uh, the Smock, the Brower, I think they all qualify as mid-range to me. That's mid-range for Spyderco, the 150 to 200 range. I don't know if you're asking for lower than that or higher than that, Kevin. Um, I hated the Sliver Axe. I held it once in my hand. I did not, I didn't care for it, but uh, I get asked to borrow an iPhone. It's half my workers carry PM2s because of you. Yeah, shouldn't we get commission on that? I think for all of me, I, I sold my Veta PM2. I got him to go get one. Um, he asked, like, he said, hey, I've got a whole lot of credit at I can't remember what store it was. Some place that sold Spyderco. I don't remember who it was. And um, I think it was... Uh, Oh, what a field and stream or something. And he said, what, what should I buy? And I'm like, well, they're going to charge you too much, but get a PM2. If you've got a bunch of credit, get a PM2. And he, I handed him mine. I had it in my pocket. And he was just like, oh, this thing is great. So, uh, yeah, I sold my vet a PM2. Upper drunken. No, not at all. In, I'm not all into the drunken. Not a not a thing I want to try. Um, oh, you have the outdoor edge slide winder. Yeah, I've, I've been wanting to try one of those. Um the ruck is going to be um in more production soon so they uh they had to ditch some of the coatings and simplify things but the upshot is they'll be making more of them um uh what is it? did i get an 0470 i that's why i just said i'm waiting all i'm waiting for is for uh um white mountain knives to have them in stock and i'm going to order it immediately i already set the money aside for it and stuff so uh but that's that's a pricey enough knife I ain't going to pay retail out for it. I love you guys, but not enough to pay retail for a ZT. So um, I'm going to wait a month, wait a minute or two. A little Native or Native 5? Um, I don't currently own a Native 5. I just uh, sold my Native 5 Lightweight because I use my Benchmade Bug Out more. But uh, I am planning on getting another Native 5. Um, uh, the Native 5 is great. It's really, really good. And I, I will have another one, but I'm just trying to determine which one. I'm probably not going to get one of the lightweights because, like I said, I just carry my bug out more. But uh, I still have the little Native, so at the moment I guess I prefer the little Native, but I still want a Native a native 5 um, in some form or another. You got the fluted carbon fiber. Yeah, if if, if I that one of those came up in a trade, I'd probably uh, probably go for it. Spiderco Brower, Thomas Connolly is asking. No. I have no interest in that. I'm, it is the epitome of everything that I'm mad at Spyderco about. So I think the pocket cope location is just ridiculous. And um, I refer, refuse to uh, keep supporting that. I'll buy Spydercos when they put the pocket clip in the right place. When they make stupid choices and make them stick out of your pocket two and a half inches, I ain't into it. Hoping to see more crew wear from Spyderco. Yeah, they're... Their crew wear is freaking awesome, man. I, I've got, I had a couple of them. I only have one now, but um, it's actually over here somewhere. I know it's on my desk. It's never far from, far from reach. And, you know, I've had no corrosion issues. I mean, I use the Aegis EDC stuff on it, but uh, EDCI, but I've never had any corrosion issues. It's had really good retention. I love the crew wear spider coats. I wish they'd make it a more standard thing. Um... Somebody asked about the Amalgam. Yeah, I have one pre-ordered. I think it's kind of big. I think it's probably going to be a catch and release for me. But um, uh, it's I, I do definitely want to try it out. Uh, um, am I am I still into modern slip joints? Yep, I still I, I used my um, Best Tech Junzi yesterday. I had it on my movie set, um, and that was cool. Um, I still really like modern slip joints. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about like old traditionals. Every time I get one. I just, I really love some of the modern ones so much. I'm just not quite getting in that mindset like I should. I have some old school traditionals. I got a couple cases and some foreign stuff. Um, usually when I'm overseas, I pick up a couple. So most of my slip joint collection is uh, either modern stuff or weird foreign stuff. Uh, yeah, you literally laughed out loud when you saw the Brower clip. It's so bad. It's ridiculous. It is. It's ridiculous. It's the worst that they've done, and that's saying something. They literally invented the pocket clip, and they can't put it in the right place. I don't understand it. I got the Brower and added the MXG beer pocket clip after I switched the Brower. Yeah, I'm sure it's a great knife. It looks like it looks like everything I want in a Spyderco, other than that. But it's it's just the fact that you have to um, do the that you have to go spend another twenty three bucks is just stop it. Just stop it, guys. It's it's annoying. And 
I'm kind of at the point now where I'm just like, I'm not gonna, I just don't want to review. If one passes through, I'll review it. But other than that, I just don't, I'm not going to support that anymore. You know, it's just uh, when they make, make stuff that I know immediately from pictures, I'm going to bitch about, I'm not getting it. Um, somebody asked me, am I still making podcasts? I it, it, Probably not with Zell and Nick. They're doing their own live show thing, and it's great. Um, we're both just so busy, or well, all three of us are just so busy. We're all still friends. Everything's fine, but we're just all so busy. It's so hard to uh, get all three of us together in one spot. And a lot of their live show things just pop up every now and then. I wouldn't be surprised if I show up on one of those, but um, it's uh, they do those late night live things, which are awesome, by the way. You guys should go watch those. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I think the future of the uh, Felicity Dice podcast is pretty bleak for now until I find someone that I know I can, um, that's on the same kind of schedule as me. So another person who is... Uh, marginally employed <laughs> has time to do it um what was the thoughts on the caribbean i don't uh i've I, I don't know it's just it looks cool but it's so hideous that i don't want it uh any upcoming sales probably i would guess in um a couple of weeks um i i've got some more stuff coming in and I, I bet that is I, I bet that will mean some other stuff going out. But uh nothing right now. If I did a sale right now, it'd be like three knives and it's really not worth it. Um have I tried a spidey chef? I I have not. It's it's on my list of ones I really, really want, but um not quite on there. Sale before he buys his hinderer. Yeah, that's a possibility. Um yeah. I'd have to sell some stuff that I um that I I don't want to sell, but I, I probably will. So, uh, hey, Mike, how's it going, man? I got to call you later tonight. I keep meaning to talk to you. This is my buddy, Mike. We, we keep missing each other. I've been busy this week. Got approached by a cop in Jersey yesterday. He looked at them and gave them back to me and showed me his 941 Jersey's history. <laughs> I think in Jersey, you have to have a knife. It's a, that's the minimum armament that you can have while in New Jersey. The Caribbean is so ugly, it's almost pretty. Yeah, it is kind of, Ryan Ryder says, it is kind of the uh, the uh, AMC pacer of knives. It's hideous, but it, it's it's kind of cool, but I just don't think I'd carry it very much. Again, it's one of those knives I'd love to review if one passes through my hands, but I'm going to buy one. Um, oh, the, the Paisan and the Capara don't interest me, Steve Barr, but yeah, the Smock I do have on pre-order, so... Um, Yeah, the, the, the Caribbean does have some kind of strange appeal to it, but not, not to me. I do, I would love to try the LC200. Isn't that LC200 also, though? I think it is. I'm interested in trying that, but, um, a cop in Massachusetts asked me what I was carrying because he knows the bench made penis clip. Yeah, you do get, it's sometimes they ask because they're just bored. They don't want to do anything to you. But, you know, I've never had any problems. I asked, I, I've said this before on here. I've asked a whole bunch of people, um, a whole bunch of cops, like, uh, what, um, you know, about laws and stuff like that. And, you know, and the number one response I get is don't be a dick. They're like, as long as, as long as you're not being a dick, we're not going to search you. So we don't care. So, uh, yeah. 940-1, I got one in here, but like I said, I've been carrying that, uh, the knife, I've been carrying this one a lot more often lately. I still like the carbon on this. If I was one of those nerds who knew I'd keep them both, I'd swap the, the carbon out and keep this blade, uh, keep the 20 CV blade, but I'm not that guy, so I'd rather just whine about the blue than actually bother to do anything about it. That's kind of how my brain works. What else do we got out here on the desk area? I was doing some knife maintenance yesterday. This is a uh, Spyderco Gale Bradley 2, which is a fantastic, fantastic knife. M4. I've done this has been in a few videos. Um, one of those knives I did not know that I needed to have in my life until I had one in my hand. From pictures, I wanted nothing to do with it. And uh, here's here's something old school. Just a regular Rat Model 1D2. Sold one of these to my friend the other day. Convinced him to go get one. He wanted a big, a big knife that he didn't have to sharpen very often, 
and I said, you know, get that. So that was cheap. Uh, the Cold Steel 4Max, any thoughts? Uh, my thought about the Cold Steel 4Max is that uh, you're not going to see one uh, on this on this channel unless one falls through my roof, which it probably could. But uh, <laughs> it's not my thing at all, so it's not something I would spend money on to review. And there's a ton of reviews of it out there. So um, Sometimes I'll buy stuff, and now that I have a wholesale deal, I will buy stuff sometimes that I know I'm not going to keep just to review for you guys. But the 4Max is kind of going beyond what I would probably do for that. Rats were like the best budget knife for a long time, and now they're meh. I wouldn't say they're meh. They're still great. They're still awesome. It's just when you've got, you know, Civivis floating around, it is kind of like, oh, man. I thought you said you were going to ask us questions. I did say that, and then I couldn't think of any. Except for, here's one question I have for you guys. So, uh, first of all, let's do the trivia question one time. Since we're segue into questions which remind you the trivia question it is uh what year was the benchmade 940 introduced and do not reply live in the comments wait till this is over and then go down and reply down below and um in in the the comments down below and then i can use the randomizer to pick one of the correct answers and you will win our usual weeha little toolkit thing. This is going to change in a while. We have this one and one more left, and then they're going to send me some new stuff. So I don't know what that's going to be. So we'll all learn together. Okay, so the one question I do have for you guys is uh, I haven't been doing as many of my just ranting videos, I guess is the best way to describe them, where I just talk about some topic or whatever. Uh, what topic would you like to hear me do for one of those next? Because it's kind of in the dead zone right now of where... A lot of new knives have come out, and it's going to be a month or two before some other new ones come out, and there's not going to be a whole lot of stuff to review. So put some topics in there, stuff you'd like to hear me just talk about and explore in a, you know, one of my little, one of the little five, six minute videos that I do sometimes. Maybe sharpening. I don't have that great of sharpening stuff, and uh, I've just got a sharp maker. It'd be pretty boring. Um, and then when I need stuff properly sharpened, I send it off to friends instead. Anything I ran about is interesting. So what about, um, I, I, I'll, okay, then I'm going to do a 25-minute video about uh, the uh, the fall of the Byzantine Empire. How about that? That's the kind of stuff I find interesting. So, um, Or about wo World War II airplanes. Um, more stand-up. No, I don't. Uh, I'm not going to do much more stand-up stuff. Politics and religions, uh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> not going to put that in here. Uh Coke versus Pepsi. Coke. I'm not a. I'm not an idiot. That would be a very quick video. That is me be going Coke, and that'd be it. Uh, steel snobs. That's not a bad idea. Bearings versus bushings. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Uh, World War II stuff is dope. Yeah, except for all the genocide. Other than that, it was a. It was a pretty good war. Um. Yeah, I know. Slash S is for sarcasm. I was joking, but um. I'm quite proud of the genocide joke I just made, by the way. I should be ashamed of it, but I'm not. I think that was pretty funny. I think that was a solid joke. Do uh, you have any interest in those dagger knives on Instagram? Um, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to have to look that up when we're done here. I do not know what that is. Uh, best type of knife locks? Yeah, that's not a bad idea for a video. That's not too bad. Um, I was going to do the... Um, uh, do one about my favorite Spider Co, but they keep coming out with more, <laughs> so I want to wait till they get through. But I'm going to do a video about what's my what's my favorite Spider Co, and um, but I have some more coming right now. It's it's probably this one. It's probably this one by a slight margin, but the Sage Five is so awesome. Uh, ran about price gouging. Um, hello, Knife Crazy. How you doing, man? I love your channel. By the way, go check out Knife Crazy. Very, very good channel. Uh, blondes or brunettes? Well, I've married two blondes and I divorced them, and now I'm married to a brunette. And I'm a very happy man, so I will say brunette. How about aftermarket pocket clips? Yeah, um, that's that, that's a good topic. I've, I've done a lot with the MXG gear ones. 
Uh, I got a custom 940-2, Nice Plus. Yeah, Nice Plus does some really cool stuff. Warranty differences. I've done a little bit with that. I sent some off, and every time I send one off, I say about what it is. How about which NCIS is the best NCIS? Uh, the best NCIS is Criminal Minds. I don't care for NCIS. Um, rant about liberals limiting what we can carry. Well, I am one of those, but uh, yeah, the... the uh, Life limit things is a bit, but I'm not going to get into all that. I don't think it's helpful uh, to just rant and call people liberals and sheeple and all that stuff. I don't think it's helpful to anybody. Uh, I really honestly get kind of annoyed when people comment like that on my channels. Um, it doesn't. Yeah, good night, Patty. Really good. Thanks so much for coming out. I'm glad that you, you made it out. I know it's a weird time for you. I really appreciate the effort to come out. But anyway, yeah, if, if I did a rant on that, my rant would be more like, guys, stop that, would be more my rant. I thought about doing a, a related rant about what will get you put into the hide comments section on my video. Um, but uh, yeah, because there, there's some stuff that really pisses me off that I don't, I love that. So if, if you have a YouTube channel, there's this glorious feature that they have that you don't have to ban people. Uh, they can still comment on your videos, but you can click on a thing that says hide comments from this user and they don't know that no one can see them. So they're just shouting into the ether and have no idea. And it's fantastic. And I thought about doing a video of like, what will make me click that button? Um, it was, uh, it was, it, it, it the sheeple stuff will make me do that sometimes. If you do it a lot, if you do it once or twice, I don't care. But if you do it a lot, I just don't like that kind of language. I just don't think it's per it just needs to be done. And then, you know, if, if you constantly just cut and paste, cut, like I've had people just find my channel and cut and paste the same derogatory comment to multiple videos, then yeah, I'm going to hide you. Uh, if you're just anything Chinese, say it's Chinese, it's shit. I don't want anything to do with it hidden, you know, oh, Woodland Tank, you're not in that category, man, I'm not, I'm not talking about you, I'm sorry if it seems like that, no, you're cool, it's fine, but, um, the, just the, yeah, it's just, there's certain things that just wind me up, I don't mind if you insult me, if you insult me directly, I'm not gonna hide you, it's fun, I, I don't mind it a bit, um, I'm a professional comedian, I do hecklers all the time, it's fine, but, um, yeah, it's just little stuff like, it's just, it, the, the number one thing is you'd be surprised how many guys just find your channel and start cutting and pasting comments. It's like, what are you doing with your life that you just have to go post that on every single YouTube video that you find? It's just ridiculous. Uh, I should do a rant on online knife retailers. You know what? I, I could, but most of them I've dealt with have been pretty good. Um, the only one I've really had issues with is honestly the Mothership Blade HQ, but it's not big issues. It's just that they take forever to ship stuff. I'll buy something and it says I immediately get a tracking number and then it's two days before they actually put it in the mailbox. That's kind of annoying. Other than that. Uh, yeah, not all Chinese Blades are trash, just the clones. I agree 100% with them tactical. That's, uh, that's why I am a completely anti-cloning and anti and I try to be anti-company that's ever made a clone, but that's becoming kind of impossible because a lot of the companies who have made clones now make uh, videos for other stuff. Uh, you know, or make videos, make knives for other big companies. So, um, uh, how about sunglasses reviews? That's an excellent idea, Mister Captain Ninety Three. I, uh, I'm a, I have an eye condition, so I wear sunglasses all the time, and. I wouldn't mind having some more nice sunglasses around. If I do a couple sunglasses videos, maybe I can get some people to send me some stuff. That's a good idea. I may actually, I may actually try that. Um, Blade HQ lingers with our important packages. They do, but uh, I did learn that you can call and um, get them to uh, get them to send it out that day, and they're very nice about it. But if you make, I I always make the order online and then call them and say, here, here's my, my order number. Can you please get that in the mail today? And they always say, okay, and they go out. Uh, Oakley's only. I'm an Oakley only guy. I've got a whole lot of Oakley's. Well, a whole lot. I've got four or five pairs, but um, I do like my Oakley's quite a bit. Um, I used to be, uh, I used to be sponsored by them, which was fantastic when I used to race mountain bikes. I got them for free and that was amazing, but I don't anymore. Now I have to pay retail for them. Um, 
I have Oakley prescription. Even my prescription glasses are Oakley, actually. Uh, Costa's 5AG lenses. I, I've never tried those. Um, yeah, so people are people are into the uh, sunglasses thing. All right. I have enough. Uh, I have enough. I actually have a, a fairly new pair of Oakleys too. They just came out this year, so maybe um. Do a rant on a uh, thing you wish more knife companies would do. Yeah, I can do that. Give me more stuff. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I... Yeah, there are a few things I can think of for that. That's not a bad idea at all. All right, we, we are coming up on an hour here, and I try and keep these about about an uh, about an hour. Somebody said, oh, um, Under Armour sunglasses. Yeah, I've been, I've been kind of wanting to try those. I have seen a couple of Under... They actually honestly look a lot like Oakley's is probably why I like them but um flak jacket I've had a pair of those those were great I think that's what I wore when I used to race was the flak jacket now I have the the ones I wear the most well I have one pair here I wear these a lot when I'm dressed up they are the uh what are they the crosshair I wear I've had these for god six or seven years I really like these and then I had Oakley gas cans um, and then I switched to now there's another one that's got some other automotive name and I really like those. Um, they're really cool. Uh, favorite horror movie. I don't like horror movies. I scream like a little girl, so I don't like to watch horror movies at all. They frighten me and I don't see why you'd pay money to go and have the poop scared out of you. The oil rig. God, what are the crankshaft? That's what I've got now. Oakley crankshafts. They're downstairs, though, in my little bucket of sunglasses by the door. But, um... <laughs> the, the, these ones make you think Top Gun. Yep, that's what I, I like. I like to have some wiry ones. Like, and then I have another pair that are similar to the Wardens that are all gold with uh, gold lenses that are kind of cool. They used to be my dad's, so they're sentimental reasons, but I still wear them sometimes. Um... Best knife under 50, 100, 150. We're getting uh, towards the end of the year, so um, that's what kind of stuff I'm going to do at the end of the year. Um, Method 7 are girl glasses, but they out oh, lots of UV for the blue. Um, a best, oh, favorite sci fi movie. Um, I would, anything Star Wars, pretty much. Uh, but I do like the new generation. I like the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies, are pretty freaking awesome. But uh, yeah, mostly. Um, Anything Star Wars. If you classify Guardians of the Galaxy as sci-fi, even though it's more a superhero movie, I, that I would put in there too. Um, oh, Fifth Element's a good one. That's a solid, solid choice. Um, hardest to sharpen steel you currently have. S90V, absolutely, is, is definitely the hardest that I have. The Last Jedi did not suck. It wasn't great, but it didn't suck. It was fine. Same with Solo. It was fine. It was entertaining. It was fine. Everybody's being so so hard on... Why are you being so hard on The Last Jedi? What was so terrible about it? Yeah, it was a bit heavy on the Luke. The panty waist, as we call him. But it was it was fine. Yeah, Solo was was fine. I don't have a max amount right now. That would probably be the hardest one I have. Favorite rom-com? I actually... I do have an answer to that. My favorite rom-com would be... Oh, we, we watch it every Christmas, and now the name of it's not, not coming to me. Love Actually. Love Actually is a fantastic, fantastic movie. Yep, anything with Mila Jovovich is good. Yep, I'd watch her sit and read a phone book in a, in a like, prison jumper. I, I don't care what she was wearing. I'd still, I'd, it, she's amazing. Um... Oh, yeah, the, the Star Wars TV series looks freaking amazing. With the Mandalorians. Oh, my God, that's going to be great. That looks so, so good. Um, favorite comedians? Um, it would probably be uh, Eddie Pepitone. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but I'm going to type it in. I'm going to give a shout out to my buddy, Eddie Pepitone. You guys need to look this dude up. He is the freaking best. Um, Barry Crimmins, who recently passed away, unfortunately, uh, working comics. Greg Fitzsimmons, I love a lot. Um, I'm a comedy nerd, so they're going to be kind of deep cuts. Uh, famous, famous like comedians you actually uh, know. David Tell is really good. Um, favorite Star Trek captain? Uh, I don't, I'm not a, as big a Star Trek guy. I would say whoever the dude from Deep Space Nine was. 
I don't remember his character name. I like the Deep Space Nine, though. Um, does Benchmade make flat ground knives? I guess everything they make is kind of saber ground. No, I, I don't. The aileron, I guess you could call it. Yeah, Cisco. Uh, you could get a kind of... Um, yeah, I guess the aileron you could kind of call a flat ground. Uh, favorite Star Wars movie? Empire. Of course. Empire Strikes Back is the best. Hey, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, I don't... I'm trying to go back with some of the... Yeah. <laughs> Mila Jovich could just sit there. Yep. Yeah, the bug outs. Yeah, I guess the bug outs pretty close to flat ground too, but it's still it's still got a bit of a thing on it. Um, and the bug outs great. That's probably that's my second favorite bench made behind the. I like the nine forty the most, but the bug out is very close second. Um, I still just can't believe you guys besmirched. Uh, Last Jedi so much. Most anticipated new knife, uh, probably the 0470, just because other people are getting it and I don't have it. That and the uh, um, Spider Coast Mock, too, I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, you're an admitted steel snob. I kind of am. I can't be, you know, doing the channel. I have to review stuff. But yeah, for my. You guys saw, if you go back, I don't know when you guys joined up. When, when this is over, you go back, you saw my. Uh, my daily carry stuff and the cheapest thing, cheapest deal I had was VG10. Um, and even VG10, I'm not that that excited about. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting to be a steel snob. I'm trying not to be, but um, you're itching for the ant lock knives from steel. Well, yeah, so am I. Last I heard was January, though, so they're still a little ways off, unfortunately. But um, I will be excited to see one. What's your opinion on the Lion Steel traditional knives? I have. Uh, um, Roundhead M390, and I freaking love it. It's it's probably my favorite, um, my favorite one. Uh, if I could do a knife review with any YouTuber, who would it be? Well, I already have collaborated with some of them, so, um, I would say of ones I haven't collaborated with, uh, Pete from Cedric and Ada, we're, we're working on something, though, when he has time, um, and then uh, I would probably say uh, JT's Knife Life because I think we'd agree on everything. <laughs> so it would be really boring. But um, yeah, but uh, those two, um, a lot of them are just kind of friends now. So yeah, Dr. Frunky and I get along great too. He's a good friend. I think he's, his, he's helped me out a lot, with uh, especially when I have high-end stuff and he really talks. Um, uh Birdshot, we, we talk a little bit. Nick Nick Shabazz and I, I don't think anybody wants us in a room together. I think we, it would be the silliest, dumbest thing, and we would just be... We'd have a great time, but you guys wouldn't learn a goddamn thing. He seems like my kind of dude, and I think we'd... Uh, I, I know he is. We talk a lot on Instagram and stuff. We've we had quite a uh, multi-hour uh, conversation the other day on Instagram. Um... But yeah, I would probably say Pete from Cedric and Ada, but I think that's going to happen. So behind that, I would honestly say I think JT's Knife Life. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dr. Frunky stuff is very high-end. He's got, he's got the bucks. So, uh... What about Grinsome Norseman? And I, I would just be doing Nick's voice all the time. That's why we wouldn't get anything done. The Delica 4. Uh... I would pay good money to sit in the corner while you talk to Nick. I think it'd be funny. Uh, what's your favorite sport and team? My favorite sport is uh, hockey, and it's the New York Rangers. And then I would say Formula One, and it's Ferrari. And then, like, ball sports, it'd be I'm a Jets fan, I'm a Knicks fan. Pretty much all New York team. I'm a Yankees fan. Pretty much all New York teams. Um, you only have a phone. That's what I do all this on. This I'm just on an iPhone 7. It's not even a new one. Um, now you're a Leafs fan? I'm so sorry that, that that terrible thing happened to you, whatever it was that made you be a Leafs fan. I'm sure it's something. But uh, Oh, talking to sunglasses, sunglasses. I do wear these sometimes, too. I'm going to let you guys go in just a minute. But, oop, bump the camera. These Tifosi things, these are great. They're like 70 bucks or something, and they're replaceable lenses, and I use these for tennis and stuff, or when it's uh, cloudy out, I'll wear these because they're lighter. 
But the Tifosi sunglasses are really cool too. I highly recommend those. All right. Um, and I put more knives on the table because um, I'm going to wrap this up. So I try to keep this right about an hour, and we're at an hour and five minutes. So, um, yeah, let's wrap this up. Uh, and if you have any more questions, ask them down below, and I will try to answer them. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, I had a really good time tonight. This was a, a, a great show, and um, you guys are awesome. And uh, you'll see me again in two weeks. I'm so sorry that there was a bit of a delay. I was sick i was out of town a whole bunch of stuff so but we'll be back in two weeks and we're gonna have another giveaway because in two weeks it's gonna be uh right my one year anniversary so we will do that all right so uh, i don't know what it's gonna be yet but we'll all find out together hope you guys have enjoyed this i've been brian as always have a good night